Hello everybody, this is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com coming to you with the January 23rd stock market wrap up for you to use this weekend. And once again, today's analysis is going to be borderline on what it's been the past five days. It's just up and down movement. Overall though, we went nowhere. So for the past five days on the S&P 500, we did, we, we did end down 1.40% on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We lost 1.64% on the NASDAQ we lost a little bit more 2.29 percent which was not good and then on the Russell 2000 we'll use as our small cap index we lost 3.94 percent and what you should notice on the weekly chart here on the NASDAQ volume was higher again this gives it another distribution week following last week's distribution week and we continue to see more distribution higher distribution weeks than, vo than accumulation Let's go look at the New York Stock Exchange, see what it looks like. And once again, you can see distribution early on, continued distribution in the middle, a day of accumulation, and another week, week, excuse me, not day, week. But then following that strong week, two weeks in a row of distribution. So overall, it's not good. It's not healthy. And the 50 and 200 day moving average are above both the, all three of the indexes, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's above all of them, which means they're all in downtrends. Short term, I'd say it's kind of lateral to down. Sub-intermediate term, it's definitely lateral if you just pick a day near the November breakdown. So for the past two months, three months even, from the lows in October, it, it's moved lower. But even from the October lows to now in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's only down negative 1%, telling you that we're just basically in a very flat market. Let me see the Dow Jones or excuse me, the NASDAQ from the low to now, negative 1.9%. So from 1027 to 123, almost three weeks, the market's gone nowhere. This is why longs have not killed it the past three weeks and shorts have not killed the past three weeks. You can find very few, if any, stocks up 100% during the past three weeks, while at the same time find very few shorts that have made 50 to 75% plunges. So overall, it's just a no man's land market. But we do have to admit, we do have 42 shorts. We've gone from 34 shorts to 42, which means that things have set up and broken down. We took seven new shorts. I can't remember which day it was, but let me just go ahead and use the NASDAQ to probably guesstimate that it was on the 20th. On the 20th, we had seven brand new shorts. All seven of them held or went lower by 122. However, on 121, we got two new bullish longs. Those two new bullish longs, one has made a nice gain today, so everybody should be happy that they've made money in a nice chart. Now you get to see how a nice chart should work. And the other one is holding in, but the fact that it didn't follow through immediately does suggest that the long side isn't the right side, even though we got one long very right recently but it feels good to make money on the long side that's like I said most breakouts are supposed to immediately immediately work and make money like let's take a look at stem stem is completely a speculative stock but it's a move it on the stem cell research if you look at the past four days you can see it's up 59 percent uh, to be very honest if you go study all my past big winners from 1999 to now you will see in some of the best performers you get that quick 50%, 20% to 50% gain in a week to two weeks. And in only five days, this one's up 66%. So right now, it came from a chart that wasn't nearly pretty enough. As you can see on an arithmetic, it looked like a complete giant mess by having an island reversal in November. So it's it can now make a good base now that it's gone up with all the max green bop and the very strong volume. But however, I want to caution you about how stocks have been acting. Now look at this move recently on a one day. It looks a little like too much. Let's try to go out on it to get you the full look. So that's the full look. Now do you notice the shooting star tail here? How it's got like a tail at the upper portion. Opens at the low of the day. Goes all the way up to 289. But yet comes all the way back to 253 on huge volume. This is probably a short term top if not a top. And one of the other, like, this is what an arithmetic looks like. Kind of has me thinking that because when I also look at ASTM, which was a long that we attempted to go long, it has a bearish tail on it. And then the stock that got the stem 
stem cell research contract, Garon Corporation has a very large tail. Opens at 648, gets all the way up to 838, producing a huge 50% plus move, and then comes all the way down to 709. On all that volume, I'm pretty sure as it got around the $8 to 840 area, big funds that were in this started to dump as it hit a 52-week high. So they're not the most bullish looking. But it's just lessons to learn for those of you that don't know what to look for in parabolic charts. You know, another strong sector that hasn't set up, you got APOL, SECO, you got CPLA, you've got LOPE, you've got... ESI and you just got you know you got a lot that look good right now so that's your leading sector however it looks like stem cells ASTM sim gurn could be coming if they base out and break out again however I have a feeling those tails are going to end up being bearish so let's take a look at oil back on the regular log chart so you can see and you can see it's up to 45 I had it on somewhere I believe it must have been the old contracts at 43 you guys know that really no one care I personally don't care because I don't drive and I know that lower oil prices does not help an economy that's hemorrhaging jobs with the government that's spending cash thinking that it's going to get the economy to work. All those three things combined tells me that forget it if oil even goes to 30, it's more of a negative sign than a bullish sign. What is a bullish sign? Look at platinum. Remember how I told you? getting bullish on these metals. Platinum bounced nicely off the 50-day moving average area today on a 3.13% move closing near the high of the day. This is definitely a strong move that tells you to get more long. Silver, another very bullish move, a 4.74% move coming on the fourth day after a move of 6%. Silver definitely is in a long position. I'm going to start looking for silver stocks, and I'll just give you free guys a little hint like SLW. These stocks I'll be looking for. And then, of course, today, my favorite long, if you need to be long anything, gold. I gave the signal to go long gold a little bit when it moved over the 50-day moving average in December. D had you done that, you now have 11% gain on your margin. I also gave a move when it got over its 200-day moving average, and sadly, it broke below. And when it did that, that caused the final loss to be a 3% loss. But showing that things can then make money quickly as long as you cut your losses, it had a very strong 3% move off the 50. I told everybody, even in this commentary, that if I was going to go long, this is where you go long. Here is where I would go real long. So if you bought that low, that, that bounce, you got a 6% return there. However, if you're looking to go heavily long, now is when I would be heavily long gold. Still not heavily long silver. Why? It's below the 200. It needs to be above the 50 and 200. Same way with platinum. And also, while you think gold's doing well, a dollar must be sucking it up. It's not. Dollar is having negative tails here where it opens near the low, goes to the high of the day, then reverses and closes near where it's open. So that's kind of negative because it can't get really above this 86.40, 86.50, 86.80 intraday mark. It seems to be a tough resistance point while gold is having no problems. So... Gold's the way to go. Uh, you can get a lot. You can get a big play out of it if you do DGP because it's a 10% move today on an ETF. I'm gonna play something else for gold just a little bit. Put it in my IRA just in case gold decides to go from 900 to 2,000 in the next year. I'd rather have that than in cash, which will probably on the dollar index go from 85 to like 100 at most. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. We're going to have a part two and part three that goes in depth into the shorts and longs. So you know what you're getting at. You know the market's basically going nowhere. Long-term trend from early 2008, down. Intermediate trend from July, down. Sub-intermediate turn trend from October, November, you know it's flat. We're going nowhere. That's why shorts and longs aren't popping like they do in trending markets. And then also, it's below the 5200-day moving average, and that means in the short-term trend, it is down. as It's like down 12% on the NASDAQ, I believe, in the last five days or so. But we're going to go into part two and part three next. Stay positive. Remember, leaders are born in bad markets and bad times, and then they are made to become leaders in the good times. But... That's all I have for today, tonight. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your time with the family and loved ones. And I'll see you all either sometime this weekend or back on Monday. Let's make some money.
and let's keep some money in the bad times. Don't go crazy with your money, honestly. Start getting some gold. I'm going into stocks to get gold. If you get gold bullion, way to go. I mean, if you have $100,000 in your IRA right now, seriously, ten dollars to $20,000 into a gold mutual fund, gold bullion, a gold ETF or anything or a gold stock, with a long-term plan, if they're making money, makes sense. And then you can use the other 80000 to find the next taser so we can get that 2,400% in nine months. I don't know if we can get it anymore since we're no longer a capitalist nation, but once we realize that giving people that don't earn anything doesn't work, maybe we'll get back on the right track. Great luck, everybody. Have a great weekend. Aloha.